Season 5 of Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2 is here, and we have so many modes and maps right now, so let's make them beautiful looking on console. First up, we have on-demand texture streaming. Switch this on. This essentially live streams the high-definition textures straight to the game as you're playing it. Of course, this does require a little bit more bandwidth, so if your connection isn't great, possibly switch this off. For World and Weapon Motion Blur and Film Grain, having these on can make the game look pretty cool and cinematic, especially when you're playing campaign, but to get an upper hand on multiplayer, switch them all off. And we can also switch off depth of field. This ensures that when we aim in, we don't have that blurring effect around our aim, essentially meaning that we have a higher chance of spotting an enemy which isn't directly in our sights. For Fidelity FX Cast, switch this on, and then in terms of the strength, if you're on next-gen consoles, such as the Xbox Series X and S and then PS5, I recommend boosting this up to anywhere between 60 and 100. This sharpens your whole image and makes the game look amazing, but does very slightly lower your frames per second. If you don't want your FPS to drop at all, or you're on older gen, then I do recommend switching this way down, somewhere between 10 and 40. Of course, if you aren't happy with the result exactly, you can play with the strength yourself. For 120Hz refresh rate, of course switch this on. This ensures that we have the capability to play up to 120 frames per second. As always, I should mention that you do need a monitor that can run that as well. For field of view, you want it on at least 105, and in fact, I've gone all the way up to 120. But an important thing to note is that going up to 120 does actually reduce the effect of your aim assist. So the sweet spot seems to be around 105 and 110 if you want to maximize aim assist while still getting the benefits of having a good FOV. Then for the ADS field of view, put it on affected. This means that when you aim in, you're still on the FOV setting that we've just set here. Otherwise, you'd zoom in to essentially 80 FOV every time you aim in, which can be advantageous at longer distances, but means that you're likely to miss more enemies around you whilst you're aiming in. For weapon field of view, put it on wide. This makes the weapon look smaller, meaning again, we can see more of our environment. For camera movements, put this on least, which is 50%. For brightness, I recommend cranking this right up to between 65 and 80. Personally, I run 75, and this seems to be great across all the maps we have on Warzone and Modern Warfare 2. So whether it's on the darker Ashika Island or the brighter Vondel. For safe area, I recommend minimizing this as much as possible. This means that your information on the screen, and in particular your mini-map, are closer to the center of the screen, reducing the distance between looking at the center of your screen at what you're aiming at and your mini-map, which is very important because the bigger this distance is, the more your eyes are in transition and you miss things happening in front of you. And then we need to head over to interface for a couple more important settings. A lot of this is subjective in here, so I'm going to skip them, but we do need to go into color customization. Putting on filter 2 makes the whole game look instantly better and more vibrant, and then for the targets, put it on both, and the intensity all the way up to 100. This makes the colors in the game pop, and ensures that we can distinctively see different color shades much easier, so you don't have those overlapping grays and greens as much. If you haven't already, put the minimap shape on square. This is 25% bigger than circular. Now that we've got these settings nailed, I do recommend heading over to the best controller settings specifically for this season as well. Or if you've got specific graphics problems on Warzone, then you can check this video out 